Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. So you might have seen on my Instagram that I have been traveling a lot. I think for the past two months, I have spent more time at airports than at my actual house, but I am on another trip right now and I tease it on my Instagram story. But this time I am in Hungary, which is why I am on a Twilight Zone version of my comment section set. We have built this here in Hungary because I will be in the country for a while filming a project for Daily Wire Plus called the Pendragon Cycle. So I will be involved in that and I'm going to be here on the ground in Hungary in my comment section set. But today we're gonna talk about something that is very American, football, because football season is about to start. This really is not a sports bread episode, it's sports bread adjacent. I'm sure you guys have seen this story by now. It came out last week, it absolutely rocked the internet. And now we are left trying to figure out whether this is like a Kaepernick 2.0 situation. Everybody hates Kaepernick now, like everybody's moved on from that story. Fool this man! or whether this is actually the case of some manipulative, money-hungry parents. Obviously, we are talking about the blind side. Before we get into this, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off-the-clock episode. Alrighty, so I love the movie The Blind Side. I have seen it more times than I can count. It is totally up my alley and you guys will probably make fun of me for that, but it is like an emotional family drama coming of age, makes me cry on my couch with my dogs. I absolutely love it and I love anything and everything that Sandra Bullock does. It's just an amazing film and it's made even more incredible by the fact that the story is true or so we thought. Now last week, over 15 years after the original true story took place and the movie came out, the real life Michael Orr, now a retired NFL player, Player, wants to share his truth with the world. So he filed a petition in the state of Tennessee claiming that the famous Tui family that he was adopted by in the movie, or allegedly adopted by in the movie, never adopted him. He said that they actually tricked him into signing papers agreeing to a conservatorship so that they could control him, exploit him, and get his money. And now, 15 years later, he wants to end the conservatorship because he just realized that he's in a conservatorship. Here's a tweet about it from Pop Bass, NFL star Michael Orr, whose story inspired the Blindside movie, says that the Tui family lied about adopting him and tricked him into signing conservatorship papers when he was 18 years old to exploit him. He has filed a legal petition to terminate the conservatorship. Now, somebody commented and said, this just makes me feel like my whole life is a lie, OMG. Somebody else said, I wish I had a family to trick me into millions of dollars and get me to play professional football. Wow, what a horrible life, SMH. Another person said, regardless of their intentions, he should be incredibly thankful for what they did. He would not have made it to college and eventually the NFL without their support. Dude made over $30 million in the league. He would not have seen a penny of it without them. Another person said, if you actually watched the movie, you could tell that they were trying to exploit him from the beginning, LMFAO. So obviously everybody has a different take on this, but it has been dominating at least my Twitter for the last week. And of course, Obviously, race was immediately brought into it. Somebody said, that movie was always weird with its white savior complex. Glad I never watched it. And it's just like, get off your high horse with these comments. Like, it is exhausting. Now, if it is true, it would be bad regardless of race. Not everything needs to be viewed through the racial lens. If they did exploit him, that is awful, and he deserves justice. And if they did not exploit him, and they actually did welcome him into their family and pay his way into college and support his football career, that's fine. That's wonderful. They do not need to be painted as white saviors then either. Now, at first I was shocked by all of this because again, I love the movie. I've read the book. I actually was at the Bitcoin conference this summer and I met the author who wrote the Blind Side book. Because, again, I just, I love the story. So I was shocked by all of it, but I basically kept scrolling and didn't really pay attention to the details because I was on vacation last week. So obviously I was spending time with my mom, but then I saw comments like this and somebody said, why would he speak out so long after his career? And of course that got my attention because he's not in the NFL anymore. He's not really relevant anymore. So why is this suddenly coming out? The story that we know from the movie happened in 2004. Michael was 18 at the time, but now he is 37. He's moved on. He's retired from the NFL. So why now? Well, he and his team are alleging that he just learned about the conservatorship in February of this year. And that up until now, he had believed that he had been adopted and welcomed into the Tui family and that they had not exploited him or any of that, according to ESPN. They said the lie of Michael's adoption is one upon which the co-conservators, Leanne Tui and Sean Tui, have enriched themselves at the expense of their ward, the undersigned Michael Orr. Michael 
Orr discovered this lie to his chagrin and embarrassment in February of 2023, when he learned that the conservatorship to which he consented on the basis that doing so would make him a member of the Tui family, in fact provided him no familial relationship with the Tuis. Now, whether or not that is even true, or if he even knew what a conservatorship was when he signed, that is obviously a very different but an important discussion, just like taking care of your health is an important discussion. Now, living a healthy lifestyle can be challenging when you are always on the go. You need simple, manageable routines to make sure that you are getting the proper nutrition every single day, which is why I'm a huge fan of Balance of Nature. Balance of Nature fruits and veggies are a great way to make sure that you are getting essential nutritional ingredients every single day. Through Balance of Nature's cold vacuum process, the vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients of the fruits and vegetables are preserved so that you can get that vital nutrition in every single capsule. Now, Balance of Nature has been a proud Daily Wire sponsor for the last year or so, and as you guys know, we at the Daily Wire do not slow down. We are constantly busy, and I know that all of us appreciate how simple and manageable Balance of Nature makes our supplement routine. When you are disciplined enough to take care of your health, you reap all kinds of benefits. Make fruits and vegetables a part of your daily diet. Your body will thank you. Go to balanceofnature.com, use promo code Cooper for 35% off your first order as a preferred customer. Again, that's balanceofnature.com, promo code Cooper for 35% off your first preferred order. Now, back to the story. Obviously, Michael has known about a conservatorship to some degree for many years, because in 2011, he called their situation, this family situation, a conservatorship in the memoir that he published himself. He wrote, since I was already over the age of 18 and considered an adult by the state of Tennessee, Sean and Leanne would be named as my legal conservators. And they explained to me that it pretty much basically means the exact same thing as adoptive parents, but that the laws were just written in a way that took my age into account. So he knew that a conservatorship existed. Maybe he didn't know what it meant at the time. And of course, that is a totally different and important conversation. But he knew that a conservatorship was in place. He's known about it to some degree for many, many years. I mean, I just want to know if he was unwillingly under a conservatorship, why didn't he say something earlier? He's a public figure. He was not under their thumb. I mean, when he was playing for the NFL and making millions, were they exploiting him then? I feel like that would be public knowledge if he was not getting any of that money and he could have easily said something and gotten out of it. Now, I guess you could argue that the Tui family could have lied about this and made it seem totally normal to Michael, you know, over the last 15 years. But I was thinking about it. When you're playing in the NFL, you're signing contract after contract after contract. If you're under a conservatorship, you can't sign those contracts because somebody else is your guardian because you are an unfit adult. Wouldn't that have struck people as odd? Wouldn't it have struck him as odd that his parents were having to sign all of his contracts when he was, you know, 25 years old? It's just interesting to me. I have no idea. I'm not wanting to assume anything. It's just very, very odd. Now, people online have been very quick to rationalize and accept this new story from Michael Orr for two reasons. Number one, because the Tui family is white, so they're going to paint them as racist. And number two, because they have displayed incredible amounts of wealth over the last 15 years that we have known about their family. Articles and posts like these have been circulating for days now. This one is from the New York Post. Inside the blindside family's lavish lifestyle, including rides on private jets and luxe trips. Now, this has helped people just easily point fingers and say, look, you know, they built all of this wealth on the black of a poor, exploited black man. Look, yes, his story adds up. But what the headlines fail to mention is that the Tuies were already rich. That's part of the movie. If you had watched the movie, you would know that they had a huge mansion, that they were very, very rich. They talk about their company. They were not riding around on private jets because of Michael Orr's $30 million that he made in the NFL. They were riding around on private jets because of the $200 million that they made when they sold their entire restaurant franchise portfolio. They were already wealthy. And people would know that if they had just watched the damn movie, like I did a hundred times. So again, I have to ask, why now? It just makes no sense. Whether it was a conservatorship or a guardianship or some kind of adoption or literally nothing, why is Michael suddenly coming out against the family that gave him this life? He would not have the career in the NFL that he had had without the Tui family. Why is he suddenly turning on them? Now, of course, I don't know the ins and outs of this family relationship. I do know that every family has skeletons in the closet. You guys know about mine. But I do know that Michael just had a new book released on August 8th of this year, and nobody knew about it until he filed this petition. The book is called When Your Back's Against the Wall, Fame, Football, and Lessons Learned Through a Lifetime of Adversity. Well, Michael, the first thing that comes to mind after hearing about the story and reading all of this is that maybe you or your PR team was backed up against a wall and you saw an opportunity and you wanted to take it. And of course, I don't have evidence to back this up, but... It's just an interesting turn of events. The sequence of events is very, very interesting. And of course, less than two weeks after all of this has happened, again, the book came out August 8th. This petition was filed on August 15th, I believe. Now his book tour is going crazy. People are lining up to talk to him. News articles are being written about him every single day. A man that was not relevant just a couple of weeks ago is now a huge headline, a major news story. So obviously something is working. And the Tuies are also working overtime to try to clear their own name. Sean Tuie Jr., who was raised as Michael Orr's younger brother, 
brother immediately went on Barstool Radio to try and clear the air. He said that he would always love his brother Michael. He thinks of him as his brother, but that he believes that his parents will be vindicated when the financial records come out. His father, Sean Sr., spoke to the press and said that yes, a conservatorship was signed. He is happy to admit that, but because Michael was 18 and he wanted to join the family, that was the only legal way to do so. And he legally needed to be a part of the family if he was going to get into Old Miss, where he played college football because Sean Tui Sr. has a booster status. I'm not really an SEC girl. I don't know exactly what that means, but apparently that is something that goes on and he needed to legally be part of the family. In one of his quotes to the press, he said that they contacted lawyers who told us that they could not adopt over the age of 18, that the only thing they could do was have a conservatorship. We were so concerned it was on the up and up that we made sure the biological mother came to court. Tui then said that he would, of course, end the conservatorship if that is what Orr wanted. So based on all of this and based on the 2011 memoir, it seems like, yes, there was a conservatorship signed. But again, why is this all coming out now? And why is this all coming out so publicly where he's attacking his family? Like, has it not been a problem for the last 15 years? Did it inhibit his career in any way? Like, it's fine if he wants to end it. But again, why now and why so publicly? Like, is he just pressed for cash or did the BLM mob get to him like they did with Kaepernick and try to convince him that his entire family is racist and exploiting him? Like, is that's a story we've heard before. Like, in 2023, it would not be surprising. Now, the last point that I want to make is that a huge part of the petition that Michael Orr filed is talking about the movie The Blind Side and saying that this is where most of the exploitation happened, that his family negotiated the movie deal without him and that he received none of the money, even though it was his story. Now, according to the Tuies, that didn't happen. And apparently every single family member only made $14,000 from the movie, including Michael. And of course, that's a lot of he said, she said, but that has been backed up by the author of The Blind Side because apparently the Tui family was not supposed to receive any royalties from the story whatsoever. The production company got the rights to the story through the book, The Blind Side, not directly through the family. And the author of The Blind Side split his royalties in half and gave them to the Tui family. He was not required to do that. That was a gift. And then they divided them equally because every single family member was featured in the movie. So they all got $14,000. $14,000. And again, it wasn't like any of them really needed the money because the family was already rolling in the dough. And based on what we know about Michael and the Tui family, they were supporting him and giving him some of that money to get him through college and to start his career. But on the subject of the movie, while we're talking about the blind side, people are so enraged by this entire story that they are taking it out on the actors. Like they can't even just focus on the Tui family and my glory and trying to figure out what the hell is going on. They're focusing on Sandra Bullock. Somebody said, so Sandra Bullock should have to give back her Oscar, right? Because she won an Oscar for playing this role. And man, do we need to start checking these good feeling stories. The parents blocked earnings from the movie and gave it to their real children. Wow. Hashtag Michael Orr. Another person said they need to take away Sandra Bullock's Oscar like they took away Reggie Bush's Heisman for this. Another person said, I demand we revoke Sandra Bullock's Oscar and give it to Meryl Streep. It's just so ridiculous. Like what did Sandra Bullock ever do to you? She's an actor. She showed up for work. She did a great job. It's it's just ridiculous. Like, it's, it's such a reach. It is ridiculous outrage, and it is totally inappropriate and unkind, especially because Sandra Bullock's longtime partner literally died from ALS last week. You are dragging her through the mud for no reason other than the fact that you want to be outraged about something online, and this story is really appealing to you. Focus on what is actually happening with the real family and why this has all come out now. That is the actual story. That is what we should be interested in. Thanks for watching this episode of the comment section. I hope you enjoyed it and that you maybe even learned something. If you've not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss an episode.